Welcome to the Mac Talks, everybody. I am your host, Scott Johnson. This fella to my right is my co-host, Chase Hutchison. Good morning, everybody. Chase, do us a favor. Tell our listeners and our guests what the Mac Talks is all about. All right. So if you are a business owner, entrepreneur, or community leader, the Mac Talks are the vehicle that bring you the stories that you need to hear. That's right. And as always... Chase is going to introduce our next guest. Super excited to have her on. Yep. Go ahead and give the uh, the rundown here. All right. So today we have CT's own Megan Henry on the podcast. She's a graduate of American University, Team USA, skeleton athlete, a U.S. Army soldier, and a, just a total badass in general. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks like for joining that. us today. How you doing? Thanks. That was a good intro. That was a great <laughs> intro, right? Usually he goes like with these l- a little bit l- lengthier, but he just get, got right to the point. I love it. That's awesome. That's awesome. So how are you doing today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for coming on and joining us. Um, you know, I saw you pop up on social media. Media. I read I read articles about you and stuff like that, and I'm like, this would be an awesome guest. Thank you. So, and and you're <laughs> located relatively close, so you're out of Roxbury, which is awesome. Um, and what I saw was the the jet set contest that you were a part of. So I kind of wanted to kind of dig into that just to kind of have you talk uh, talk about that a little bit. So. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, so I entered this contest to be Miss Jet Set. Mm-hmm. Uh, the winner gets to be on the cover of Jet Set magazine, but they also win fifty thousand dollars cash. Nice. So that's obviously, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's cares about the magazine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and the reason why that's like interesting to me is um, I do skeleton and I'm an entirely self funded athlete. And yep. most people don't know that they don't know that. Yeah, a lot of Team USA athletes are funding themselves, and mm-hmm. skeletons very expensive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I wanted to use it for that. But also, um, I'm a blood clot survivor. And so I would like to give back to some uh, blood clot awareness nonprofits. That's awesome. That's really great. Tell us a little bit about what happened with the with the whole blood clot thing, because I read a little bit about it. And it sounded like something that you got very lucky that you caught. Totally. Um, because it sounds <laughs> like it was which is what happens. It's kind of why we need to be advocates for ourselves nowadays. Um, you know, misdiagnosis and things like that. Um, So tell us a little bit, you know, about what happened. So I was um, in, this was like early on in my skeleton career. I actually had just finished um, or ended my season in 2012, the beginning of 2012 as the national champion. And then uh, in the fall, I was started to take the birth control Nuvering. And um, I started actually noticing symptoms within 10 days of starting it. Wow. And, but it was so, so slight, like the the average person, I don't think would have noticed. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that. I was starting to have a little bit difficulty breathing. It was like I was having, uh, taking a little bit longer to recover from sprints. Yeah. Something like that. Like really, really minor, but it wasn't going away. And then within the following weeks, it progressed to the point where I couldn't have a conversation with somebody. Um, I actually had to do a combine test, which is like an annual test we have to do that's that measures your you know, max uh, effort lifts. We do sprints and agilities and I couldn't even jog a lap for wow. the warm up. I was like, wow. I don't know what's going on, but I guess I'm going to have to somehow make it through this today. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I, I, if you told me I had to repeat that and under the same conditions, there's no way I would be able to do it. Like, yeah. It was just absolutely a miracle that I made it through this combine test. And I did fairly well. I mean, I yeah. didn't do my absolute best, but I did you know, considering the, the conditions. That's got to be did. so tough. Yeah. yeah. It it's was one of those really things that wild. you're trying to fight through and you're thinking, you know, is there something wrong with me or am I just having an off day or, you know what I mean? But yeah. as it continued to compound, that's when you. <laughs> and and people were like, it was funny because I'm supposed to be like, at the time I was a returning athlete and there's new people at the combine every year. Yeah. Like you have some returning people, new people trying to get into the sport. And I'm like, I do. I mean, one of our sprints is only like, it's like 45 meters or something yeah, yeah. like you know, it's not like you're running a marathon. And I seriously like collapsed at the wow. end and I was trying to catch my breath. So that people are probably like looking around at me like, this girl's supposed to be like good. Like, <laughs> what have you been you doing know? in the off season? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like, what the heck is wrong with this girl? Like, this isn't that serious. And as an athlete too, you're like so in touch with your body. And when one thing, like, it's like a microchip. If one grain of sand gets in there, like it, the whole thing goes haywire when, totally. you're, when you're operating at that level. So, um, and it's funny you say that because I, I, when I was trying to figure out what was wrong with me, um, I saw a slew of doctors. I saw five doctors before I was 
accurately diagnosed. And and that goes back again to what you're saying, Scott, that you have to be your own advocate. You do. Because the first person, I mean, they wanted to give me an inhaler. Some an, Another doctor gave me... Um, like an antibiotic for an upper respiratory infection. And I was like super detailed with my story. I was like, I was living in Utah at the time Mm -hmm. um, training and there were like, there were fires there. So Uh, I was like, I don't know if I'm having some sort of reaction to that. One of my teammates had mono. I didn't make out with them, but maybe I got mono somehow. You started (laughs) just reaching for things. And I was like, but the only thing that I changed is I started to take this birth control. I eat the same. I train the same. There's nothing different about my life except this one thing. And so I just kept saying that same story over and over again. And um, and yeah, that was the one thing that mm. th- threw everything off. Yeah. And uh, finally, and I, I flew across country too, which is super dangerous. If you know anything about yeah, blood clots, blood clots it's a huge risk. Yeah. So, um, I, I mean, it really was like miraculous that, cause I took two long haul flights. I flew from Utah to Florida wow. and then Florida up to Connecticut. And I saw, um, five doctors in that time. And the <sighs> pulmonologist was the last doctor I saw. And he was like, based on your story, I really think that you have blood clots and like, I need to rush you to get a CAT scan into the hospital right away. Yeah. Wow. And he was like, this is like, seriously, like you're a ticking time bomb. This is really, really dangerous. And you just flew all over. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I, um, so probably I, the fact that, you know, I think if somebody's body that wasn't in shape the way that you are, oh, yeah. it would have hit them. Like, 100%. I don't think they would have made it that far. I don't because, think so either. You know, as you know, <laughs> you recover from things you know, when your body is in shape much faster. So, and you obviously have a stronger body that can handle those type of things. Yeah. So, and I, and I think I noticed it. I mean, I think I noticed it sooner. Um, but I do think the fact that I was so active, like that's what brought it, brought on. it out so, faster. Yeah, yeah. So quickly. Yeah. So every, so you came back to Connecticut, doctor diagnosed it. How long did it take you to recover from that? Um, so they rushed me to the hospital. They're like, you know, I'm like, think I'm in denial, right? I'm like, Nah, he, this guy's not right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is the, the one doctor that's right is yeah. the one you think is wrong. I, I'm like, I was like, no, no, no. Like, I'll, I'm probably, I'm going like, to be all right. This is way too serious. This can't be it. Like, yeah, yeah. Cause, well, because I'm like, that's like really bad, you know? Yeah, and, um, yeah. So I, I'm i sitting there. They did a, a CAT scan on my lungs and then they did the ultrasound on my legs. And I'm sitting there in this room. They're doing the ultrasound and they hand me a telephone and it's the doctor. And he's like... I got some bad news for you. You know, you have uh, multiple blood clots in both lungs. It looks like somebody took paint and splattered it wow. everywhere. You have a blood clot in, off the main pulmonary artery that's really dangerous. So you're going to be taken by ambulance right away. Yeah. And so I just started bawling. Like I just was bawling yeah. my eyes out. And I was like, this is so bad. And uh, so I was in the hospital. I was bedridden for a week, put on blood thinners. When I got out, they were like, you can walk for 10 minutes a day. Wow. And so at the time I was training like five to six days a week, sometimes twice a day. That had been so tough. So it was mentally. like, what is going on? Yeah. Um, and, but I was on blood thinners for about uh, eight months. They thought I was going to be on blood thinners for like a year to a year and a half. Wow. And they, uh, they were like, you may never be an athlete ever again. Yeah. So at that time, it was like, it was so, so hard tough. to deal yeah. with like mentally. Yeah. And um, then obviously a way to help get through with mental stuff is exercise and yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it must've been really tough, you know, just sitting there, just trying yeah. to figure and, out what's going to happen. And I was in and out of doctor's offices so much too, because when you take blood thinners, at least the one that I was on, which is Coumadin or Warfarin, um, you have to check your blood levels. Cause if it goes, if it's too thin or it's too thin, yeah, like, then it'll create other issues. So, um, and your diet affects it. Like it's a huge pain in the neck. So, yeah. um, that in itself sucked because I'm yeah. like, my life is so different. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you right. Know, like I'm supposed to be competing right now, and I'm in this doctor's office, and you know, to my yeah. left and right are like geriatrics. Like, what yeah. am I doing? <laughs> that's gotta be. That's gotta be tough. Just going to Quest, getting blood work all like, the time. Uh, yeah, just I was like, like, oh my god, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. But in all, um. Yeah, it took about eight months for me wow. to be cleared, and so I was out for a whole season. Um. And I had, you could, like I said, you couldn't really work out. You could do some stuff, like as I got farther along in the recovery, but this, the risk of like bruising and bleeding out and stuff, it freaked me out so bad. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they were like, you have to be really careful of stuff. Yeah. Like even if you like, you know, bump your shin or hit your head on the door <clears throat> or like whatever the heck it is, uh, yeah. it was a huge risk. And you're like, you know, used to like, 
obviously being an athlete, yeah. like somebody's in your way when you're trying to leave target, you're like you're dropping your shoulder. Yeah, I'm like, oh gonna, <laughs> you're like, yeah, you know, you gotta be careful around. now. Like, yeah, that's Are crazy. There, would, were there any things that you had to deal with afterwards, like like lasting effects that you now, Yeah, how long did it take you to get back onto, that must have been tough too, but you also must have been excited because you're like, okay, I can, yeah. I can pursue this again, but now I'm, you know, starting from the beginning more yeah. or less. Not oh, beginning, because totally. muscle memory and things like that. So how long did it take you and to get back to where you were? Um, so like I said, I left as the national champion. And at the time, uh, I was ranked like fifth in the country. Yes, I was the national champion. But as far as uh, like international ranking goes, it was fifth. Yep. And uh, when I came back during that team trials, I couldn't even finish in the top 10. So uh, skeleton, because it was early on in my career, skeleton is, you need this lighting experience. If you walk away from it, it's yeah. kind of like riding a bike, but mm. it is, you Times missed 10. out on so much experience yep. um, that, you know, people just leapfrogged me. So it, it, was, it was really hard to come back to. And you would see that actually even with our most experienced yeah. athletes. If they let, leave as number one, they're probably going to be like number three, number four or something when they come back. Yeah. Um, That's like in any sport, you know, because yeah. you're, you're practicing at such a high level and everybody else's too. Yeah. And any day that you miss could affect. You right. Know. And but so especially being, that feel thing of the ice. Like I can see oh, that yeah. being a really. Even in an off season, you know, I mean, luckily everyone else is, you know, has six months where they can't slide. But even in an off season, when you come back to sliding, everybody's first few days are totally knocking the rust off. Cause you're like, I have not done this in six months. Like it's yeah. foreign. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. So. I can imagine. I can imagine. <laughs> So, um, so you're back competing again. You've been competing now for what that was when, when did you start? When would you get back? Uh, so I came back the following season. So I was able to compete, um, in that Olympic trial. So the Olympics was in 2014, but we start in the fall. So the Olympic trials is in, uh, 2013. Yep. And, um, so I've been back ever since. Uh, it took me a while to move back up into the national team. So yep. I've made the national team five times. I made That's awesome. after the Olympic year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the following year, I made the world championship team. I just made my second world championship team, which is awesome. So yeah. essentially, in a non-Olympic year, the world championships is the highest level of competition. Yeah. So mm, okay. Great. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, so you. real quick, because I know we got sidetracked. So <laughs> let's go back to the jet set contest. Yeah, sure. So um <laughs> So it, I know you were leading it for a long period of time. And then, yes. and then at the end, um, I know, what did you end up in third or? Uh, I finished in second in my grouping. Okay. So I don't get an automatic onto the semifinals. Now I have to do a wild card round, which is kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah. So are you going to do that? I know you were thinking about it. Yeah, first. I was thinking about it. I mean, it's, it's been two months of, you know, asking people to vote for you, which yeah, is know. like, you're, I, I so seriously. all the same people have to vote again because it's yeah. a different thing. Okay. So, and, but people can vote every day. So that's like the hardest part is being like, okay, I'm going to like message oh. all my friends, but I got to remind you. But to vote people every have day. to, wow. but basically to win, like it's about buying the votes. Yeah. Really. Which is, which is really difficult. Really weird. It's like, <laughs> that's weird. That's so, so weird. So yeah, people can vote for free using their Facebook account, but the people who end up like the girl who ended up beating me had a lot of supporters who bought votes. And so um, the part of the contest, that part of the contest supports the Be Positive Foundation for Childhood Cancer. So it, it is a good cause, yeah, but yeah. if you don't win, you have a bunch of people supporting this cause and you don't see any of that, which, which like is fine. But for someone like me who has fundraised in the past, I haven't even fundraised as much money as people have paid for votes wow. for this. Yeah. So that to me is like, what am, what am I doing this for? Yeah. yeah <laughs> if right? I'm not going to win. Like, uh, but obviously the prize of $50,000 is, yeah. is still very enticing. So mm -hmm. now have you always been like into modeling and stuff or is it something that kind of came later no, on? No. Yeah. I can't, it just came, um, as I started to try and promote myself more. So I have been an athlete for the army in the past. I've been in the army world-class athlete program, which is awesome because yeah. then, um, I do get to represent the military, but I also have an income and, um, in skeleton season, you don't have an income. Um, I've done weird things in the summer cause I'm an army reservist. So, uh, you have to kind of balance that, you know, your athlete life and your career, your yeah. working life. Yep. Um, but 
yeah, I, I, it just kind of came later as I tried to promote myself a little bit more and acquire mm-hmm. like more sponsorship type stuff, uh, just to look a little bit more professional and, um, to so build just, your brand. Yeah, as totally. Well. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's great. Um, so it was kind of funny because, um, we're, we're like, no, she does bobsledding. It's like, no, but it's called skeleton. <laughs> so I just and then we figured out the whole thing, which I thought was was really cool. So originally they wanted you to do, so bobsled is the big sled that a bunch of yes. people jump in. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool running. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's that's the big thing that you push that gets going. And skeleton is just the one one person. One person. Now, are you laying on your on your stomach? Okay. Going head first. What's the one where you lay on your back? Luge. Okay, we're learning a lot here today. <laughs> I, there's a picture on your Instagram where you're you're on the skeleton and you're like holding yourself up. And my friend was like, "You have to hold you. You have to do. It. You have to suspend no. yourself above <laughs> yeah. the thing the whole time. Just I'm plank like, the whole way. Oh, you're like, I don't the know, back. but that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. <laughs> that that was probably a picture in the outrun. So all of the tracks in the world, um, there's no braking mechanism on the sled. So the tracks usually all end uphill. Yeah. So uh, usually you'll kind of air break. That's what mm. that's called. Like you'll s- push yourself up and drag mm. your feet to slow down. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I was reading that originally, you know, they, um, what was it? Was, your, was it your field hockey coach? Cause you, you played, uh, college field hockey, mm-hmm. correct. Um, and your field hockey coach recommended you to join, to try out for bobsled, yes. right? But then they told you that you had to gain 50 pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, first of all, how could you even gain 50 pounds? I know. Like, what would you? I don't like, know. <laughs> well, so I'm I'm actually the smallest woman on the U.S. skeleton team. And actually, when I was at World Championships, the commentators said I was the smallest girl on the field. So I'm one of, if not the smallest girl competing in skeleton. So, I mean. Is that an advantage? Do, is that an advantage? No, or dis- it's, a dis- it's a disadvantage because oh, yeah. of your weight. That's yes. like me when I go to the go kart places. That's the one right? I was just like, about this to say. Kid, that. This so. kid, like, I'm, I'm like, I feel I'm doing good, but this kid is like ripping past me left and right, and I'm like, what is up with this kid? And then I realize that he, I outweigh him by it's 100 pounds. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the opposite problem from what you're doing yes. is that you want to have the weight because it gives you the speed mm-hmm. to kind of. So yeah, that's. But so the bobsled thing obviously wasn't right. going to yeah. wasn't going to work out. And I've I've tried to gain weight for skeleton too. That's what I'm saying. And it, like, it's very I don't know hard. Where you're it's really put 50 hard for pounds. me. To, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's hard for me to put on like five to ten pounds, let alone like know, like me. Plus. No problem. I'll put fifty on. <laughs> no problem. I'll yeah. just go to Pippa's. I'll hang out for the whole weekend. I'll just crush <laughs> wings. Like you know, I'll take my grandma to TK's for her birthday if she's eighty eight. We'll crush eighty eight wings. <laughs> 88 like, wings yeah, yeah, it'll be great. So, but um, so then you went into skeleton, um. And what was it like the first time you got on that thing and went down? You must have been um, a little bit like, I mean, were you an ice skater? Did you at least like, you know what I mean? <laughs> have like, you know, did you, were you, you were a kid? Did you go down the biggest oh, hill yeah, and you were sledding? Totally, like you've totally. always been kind of a, you know. Are we, you a skier? Uh, I snowboard. So I snowboard. yeah, it's, it's definitely um, an adrenaline type sport. Yep. I was always really into skydiving as well. Ooh. So this kind of reminded me of that or like, even just roller coasters, like it's similar to that, except it's all downhill. You're not doing, you know, up yeah. and down. But um, it was, it, it's very much like flying when yeah. you first do it. I mean, it's still like that now, but like the first time, I mean, it's very vivid. So Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> and they start you lower on the track, so you're not like bombing off the top. Yeah, right. <laughs> so they start you lower and then you gradually like move Work up, your way you know, up. baby yeah. steps up to the top. Um, but it is it is it's a weird feeling because uh, with ice, there's not very much friction. It's very smooth for the most part. And uh, you're very much, yeah. And like, that's where like the loaded. speed comes in. Right. So how fast do you go on? On this um, it depends on the track, yeah. but like 80 miles an hour is, is common top wow. speed. And what happens when you re- have you ever wrecked? Oh yeah, I have. Yes. Hopefully I don't do it more often. Like, <laughs> and that ice is obviously not soft. Right. So you, they, t- they teach us to like keep rotating because you'll get ice burn, like almost oh, like road rash. Yeah, but probably worse. Yeah. It's, it's gross. There's some people with some good, good scars from that, but. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. That is crazy. So you're kind of an adrenaline junkie. Uh, a little bit. I mean, I definitely, like I said, I always I grew up loving roller coasters and skydiving and things like that. And so this was, this was a very much like a natural fit for me when I was recruited. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's great. That's awesome. So I was looking at some of your pictures on Instagram and the one that I keep sending to everybody is the one where you have like that. I don't know what type of gun it is, but you're, you're holding the gun, you're in the fatigue oh, yeah. and your arms are like <laughs> ripped 
<laughs> I was showing people the picture of you doing Deadpool. <laughs> oh yeah, that was, I loved that. I, <laughs> however, that was really painful. I had to do it like the same shot like four hundred times, where they're just like dropping because drop, that would that was real. People are like, oh, that's probably like Photoshop. No, people. I had somebody standing there like dropping. You know, expelled rounds on me, and it was wow. <laughs> it was it was painful, but worth it because I really wanted the picture. So yeah, that was cool my shot. idea. It's a cool shot. Do you have, don't you have like samurai swords on your back? Yet too? I don't. I don't because no? I didn't have any, so I just uh, wore like a belt of ammunition. Yeah. So I thought that was equally as cool. Close yeah. enough. <laughs> That's funny. So, what made you decide to join the army? Uh, I always wanted to join. I thought it was like a huge honor to do, but when I was little. Um, actually more like in middle school was when it really piqued my interest. Um, we had recruiters and, um, so I went to Chapag in Washington, Chapag okay. Valley and yep. the middle school and the high school are connected. Mm -hmm. And so the recruiters were there and they did like a push up contest or something. And I was like, Oh, I can, I can do this. I'm going to go do this push up contest. I'm going to win. And I was in middle school at the time. Yep. And so they're like, Oh, if you want to do it, you have to, you know, you have to sign your name. Yep. <laughs> and I was like, sure, I'll, I'll do that. Like I'll request some information from you. And so I do this push up contest, you know, day goes on, I go home. And then weeks later, a recruiter shows up to our door and I had said that they could come. Yeah, yeah. And so and my dad opens the door and he's like, what? are you doing here? Yeah. And they're like, <laughs> we're looking for Megan. And he's like, she's not even old enough to join the army. And yeah, I was yeah. like, you can come in, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad is like, what the heck is going on? Yeah. But I always, I always like did stuff like that where I was like, okay, we need to go to this seminar about financial aid for college. And I need to be like thinking about college when I'm, you know, in eighth grade. <laughs> so he's like, okay, <laughs> whatever. I'll let this guy come in and talk to her. Yeah. And, um, even though, because, and I've helped out in recruiting now, and I know that they have to, like, they actually have to meet numbers. They don't get paid for that. Yeah. But this guy, he took the time to come in and talk to me, and um, that really stuck with me because I knew, like, I wasn't going to be a prospective person for, you know, however many years, yeah. <laughs> like, yep. 10 plus years or whatever. But you he know? still came in and, and he still came in and talked to me about it, and I, and I really liked that. So then when um, I was, and I considered doing ROTC in college, but... Yep. Because I did sports at a Division One level, I it was a year round commitment, and I would have had no social life. Yeah, right. So I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll just put this to the side. But when I was going to graduate and look for jobs, um, I really wanted a federal position, and a lot of the jobs that I was interested in, one in particular at the FBI, was like, we're looking for three to five years work experience and a master's degree, and so I was like okay, I'm going to go home and I'm going to join the army. Yeah. So I graduated. I went home a month later and I enlisted and I was like, this is how I'm going to get my master's degree. And so, um, I did that. That's <laughs> awesome. That is awesome. You need like a, uh, they need to make a sitcom about you. Like, <laughs> I mean, seriously, let's be honest. Like <laughs> FBI, military, <laughs> modeling, like you do a little bit of everything. It's awesome. I love to see it. It's such a, it's such an inspiring thing. And, Thank you yeah. know, and we love to have on guests like you to be able to just listen to your story, listen to your drive. Um, it's inspiring for us. It's inspiring for all 52 of our YouTube subscribers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what do you have, uh, coming up in the future? What do you have that's going on? I know you're still training. Yep. And um, so, so I actually, I, I actually broke my toe at world championships before world championships, my pinky oh, toe. Oh no. And so right now I'm resting yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, I have to go to Germany with the army for a couple of weeks at the end of this month. And then, um, I'll be training in my off season. So I don't have a competition. So let me ask you this. I yes. don't mean to put you on the spot here, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Um, <laughs> are you in, and I think that you'll totally dig this. So it's not going to be something that's, you know, putting you on the spot uncomfortably, but are you going to be in town in Connecticut in June, the month of yes. June? Okay. Would you be interested in attending? Cause you mentioned the pushups and then you also <laughs> mentioned that, um, that you train in Stanford. So you're mm -hmm. kind of, you, you're down that way a lot of times. Uh, we have a, a guest that came on. He's a good friend of ours. His name is Andy Berman. Um, and he does this charity called Push Ups Against Cancer. Okay. So we are going to go and set up the podcast there and make a video and, you know, go there and support it and do our push ups and everything awesome. like that. So, I mean, if you could come, totally. that'd be great. The more people, Andy is going to love it. 
Andy actually made Chase do burpees when he had his uh. episode here. <laughs> so when you meet Andy, you're going to totally love this guy. I'll give you his social media. Him and his three buddies, they're called Goat Mafia Fitness. Okay, awesome. And they are hilarious. So I'm <laughs> sure once I connect you guys, you guys will be buds. But it's just such an awesome thing. And when you told me about the push-ups, I'm like, how awesome would that be if she came? For with, sure. With me? me and totally. Scott are right now in the in the middle of training for the push-up. Training concept. for the yeah. push-up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're training for the, for the push-up. Incre- so increasing just- water intake. So you do, you do push-ups, I think, for like a certain amount so of time. So you do push-ups for an hour. It's a contest. It's a, really an endurance thing. You just okay. try to do as oh many gosh, as possible. Oh my gosh, endurance is not my thing. But it's okay. I can do so it. So <laughs> it was funny because before we were talking, I was saying, like before we got did the episode with Andy, I was telling Chase, I'm like, I'll give more money just to not do the push-ups, <laughs> right? And then Chase brings that up when we were having the episode, and Andy goes, no, 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 I get people that say that to me all the time, and, and you know what I say? I'm like, don't worry about it. That kid right there, that kid over there, he has cancer, and he's doing push-ups, but no, you don't need to do push-ups. You don't like, need to do push-ups. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, I don't worry about it. Like, I don't know. It's like, oh, okay, now I feel this big. I'll do the yeah. push-ups, and I'll, more, and I'll give more money now. <laughs> so we actually have a meeting tonight with him, um, so I mean, if, if you can fit it in your schedule, it'd be great. Totally. Um, so I mean, it's something like you know, these type of things are things that we support. And obviously you spoke about charitable work that you do as well. So, and it's a good time. We should go have some fun. Yeah. You know, we'll set up the pod there. We're going to be making a little video. So awesome. we'll be fun. bringing the megaphone, Oh, but not the, not the, not the tequila. That'll be for, <laughs> <Not> <laughs> so, the tequila. that's for after. <laughs> so, um, so what else, so what else is, uh, I'm sorry. I kind of interrupted you a little bit there. So you have the broken toe. Um, Oh yeah. So I'm resting for a little bit. Yep. Going away with the army to Germany, and then uh, I'm training. I don't have my next competition is not until October, so I'm just prepping for that. Um, Are we going to see you in the Olympics, 2020? Oh, for sure. Yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> I love it. That's going to be so awesome. Uh, yeah, we're going to be rooting for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Definitely. Be definitely. definitely. Once you become, <laughs> once you become a part of this podcast, we forever speak about you in the future. So That's when you're awesome. out there you're grinding, you're going to Well, you need, to, you need to help me with like really cool promotional videos for yeah. my Instagram. No, like, definitely. Yeah. For sure. Wait till you see the stuff that we give you, the promo stuff that we give you from this. It's really cool. So, awesome. And we'll always be doing posts about you and stuff like Thank that. You. So it's cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, we're getting ready to wrap it up, but this is the part of our show where Kevin comes in with the <laughs> heater. <laughs> um, part of our show, it's called One Question from Kev the Intern, and he comes over here, <laughs> fires That's a question at our guest. Yes, it is. Title. We're actually working on a song, so oh eventually he's going to have his own like. Segment. Eventually, it we're going to have an intro. It should just be the Rocky theme song. <laughs> 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 All right, Kev, go ahead. All right, here we go. How's it going? Um, so. Chase described you as kind of a, as a thrill seeker, and as you were talking to you, it was, it really feels, sorry, I'm just going to, Karen needs to see me. Um, <laughs> so it really feels like, does, it, does, it, does anything scare you? What, what, you just, <laughs> I love it, he's got me too, good, yeah, that's great, good question, Kev. Uh, definitely, I mean, skeleton is scary at times. Uh, the track I just raced on at World Championships it was horrifying, I mean, it was like, not horrifying. It's just really, really fast and really, really technical. I was crashing out of yeah. tr- out of a curve every other training run. So for me to be like, I'm so confident to go in this race was a little uh, iffy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, there and there are tracks like that that are intimidating, and so they are really scary. Um, I also am afraid of spiders. And, um, <laughs> that's funny. And um, I have a fear of drowning. I yeah. don't know why, but I'm afraid of drowning. That's, that's why you stay on the ice. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's can't frozen. drown on ice. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Good question, Kev. <laughs> Good question. Um, all right, cool. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We're excited to, to continue to grow with you. And yeah, definitely. Hopefully you can make it to the push-ups against cancer. Chase? All right, Go I'm going to close this Chase out here. Let me just pull out. out my notes. So, and if there's anything I forget, let, let me know because I okay. have your Facebook and Twitter and everything. Um, so thanks for joining us, everybody. And if you're looking to learn more about Megan, you can visit her on Facebook, Instagram, at the Savage Meglet, and on Twitter, at Megan Henry USA. Megan, thanks for coming on. It's Thank a pleasure you so having much. you. For all of our listeners, if you want to find out more about the Mac Talks, how to listen, watch, and subscribe, you can visit our website, www.themactalks.com. If you like our content, please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and like us on Facebook. Also, follow us on Instagram at Mac Talks. If you want to give Scott and I a follow as well, it's at Scotty underscore content underscore and at Chase underscore. Hutchison underscore <laughs> underscore all those underscores. Loves to throw the underscores in there. All right, Megan, thank you so much. <laughs> Best of luck. Uh, thanks for coming on the show, and uh, 
Until the next time. Yeah. Signing off. All right. See ya.